Did you ever stop to think about what your favorite gadgets are made from? Most of the material goods that we use on a daily basis, cell phones, computers, cars, and beyond, are actually made from mined materials. In other words, without mining, the world as you know it won't exist. Hi there, I'm Kevin with the Governor's Office of Energy Development, and I'm here to talk to you about mining and reclamation. There are several different kinds of mining that take place in Utah. Underground mining, which includes long wall mining and room and pillar mining. There's also surface mining, which includes strip mining and open pit mining. Did you know, after mining for these resources, the mining company is responsible for reclamation of the land? Reclamation is the process of restoring land that has been mined to a natural or economically usable state. Mines have to factor in the costs of reclaiming the land when they initially permit the mine. This means they need to estimate how much reclamation will cost and then be able to factor those expenses into how much they need to get out of the mine. A multitude of people have to work on reclamation, and mining provides jobs to thousands of Utahns along with other economic benefits to the state of Utah. First off, let's take a look at this map of Utah. Right here in Salt Lake County, we have the Bingham Canyon Mine, which produces copper and gold ore. Here in Carbon County, we have several active coal mines. This is a section of coal from Carbon County. And in Juab County, we have the Spore Mountain Mine that produces beryllium ore. Beryllium is used in many of our everyday electronics, and Utah is the sole producer of beryllium ore in the United States. Now consider, have you ever been to a mine? If so, what were your experiences and what did you learn? Do you know anyone who works in the mining industry? And if so, what is their job? To learn more about mining and reclamation, we're going to play a game, a cookie mining game. And yes, you can eat your cookie at the end of the game. Each student will start with $19 of mine cash, a cookie mining worksheet, and some grid paper. Next, just like in the real world, each student will need to buy their own mining property, which in this case is a cookie. Remember, only one mining property per player. You have different mining properties to choose from, and each one has a limited number of resources. And in this case, it is the number of chocolate chips in your cookie. That being said, you will carefully want to consider the cost of your mining property along with the cost of your tools and the time it will take to mine and reclaim your cookie mine. Your options for a mining property include your basic chocolate chip cookie, a chewy chocolate chip cookie, and a deluxe chocolate chunk cookie. Next, students must buy their own mining equipment. More than one piece of equipment may be purchased, and equipment may not be shared between students. The mining equipment for sale include a flat toothpick for $2, a round toothpick for $4, and some metal paper clips for $6. Now, for each chocolate chip mined from your cookie mine, that will result in $2 profit. Broken chocolate chips can be combined to make one whole chip. You will need to trace your cookie on the grid paper to determine the size of your mining property. After the cookie has been mined, it will need to be reclaimed. Reclamation costs are $1 for each square covered outside of the original outline. The goal of the game is to successfully reclaim your mining property and finish with the largest sum of money after you have mined and reclaimed your cookie. As a mine operator, you have to follow specific rules when running your cookie mine. And in the cookie mining game, there are six rules. Number one, no student may use their fingers to hold the cookie. The only things that can touch the cookie are the mining tools and the paper on which the cookie is sitting. Number two, students should be allowed a maximum of five minutes to mine their cookie. Students who finish before the five minutes are up should only be credited for the actual time spent mining. Number three, a student can purchase as many mining tools as desired and the tools can be of different types. Number four, if the mining tools break, they are no longer usable and a new tool must be purchased. Number five, 
The students who make money by the end of the game win because they realized a mining profit. And number six, most importantly, all students win at the end of the game because everyone gets to eat the remains of their cookie mine. Now, let's play. I'm going to select the basic chocolate chip cookie for $3. Now, with my $19 mine cash, that'll be minus $3, leaving me with $16 now. Using the grid paper, I will trace my mining property. There we go. Looking at my tools, I'm going to go ahead and select the basic flat toothpick for $2 and the paper clip for $6. So that's minus $8 of my mine cash. And that leaves me with eight remaining dollars. Now that I have my mine property and my tools, I'm going to get to mining. Starting out, I'm going to fold my paper clip and make a pointed tool. Now remember, you can only use the tools. So using the tools, I'm going to pop out the chocolate chip. There, there's one. That's already $2 for my cookie mine. Now I want to be careful to preserve as much as my cookie as possible so I don't have to spend as much money on reclaiming the cookie. Now I'm going to go ahead and quickly mine as many of these chocolate chips as possible so I make a profit on my mine. You can see as you're mining your cookie, it begins to break apart, which means these are pieces I'm going to have to eventually reclaim at the end of the game. All right, there we go. So I'm going to stop right there. I feel like I have removed enough chocolate chips to make a profit on my mine. Counting them up, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to combine those for eleven. That results in twenty-two dollars coming back to my mind. So we'll go ahead and count that back. There we go. So that brings my new profit up to $30. But we're not finished yet. Now it's time to reclaim my mining property. Again, using only your tools, you have to place all your pieces back in the original area of your cookie. And if you'd done this right, you won't have to spend too much money reclaiming your cookie. You have to get it all back in there. Okay, now that I have it back in there, I'm gonna trace it. You have to trace the perimeter because you have to make sure that you have everything back within. So, now I'm gonna clear my cookie out of the way and count my squares. Alright, so it looks like 10 squares have been added on to my original property. So that results in $10 that I have to spend to reclaim my mining property. Now, if you remember right, I had $30 after counting up my chocolate chips, subtracting my $10 for reclamation costs for my cookie. That leaves me with $1 of profit, meaning my mine was profitable and I won. But like I said, rule number six, everyone wins because you get to eat your cookie. Thanks for watching. You can find this and more lesson plans and activities on our website, energy.utah.gov.